In this video, we're going to talk about nucleophiles and electrophiles. Now, this is a topic that's going to be really important throughout the rest of the semester. And just a note on what these terms mean, right? So the file suffix, right, that means that it has an affinity for something, right? So an autophile is somebody ha who has an affinity or who is really into cars or automobiles. And so a nucleophile is something that really likes nuclei, right? And we know nuclei have positive charges, so a nucleophile... likes positive charges, whereas an electrophile, right, it likes electrons. Electrons are negative, so electrophiles are things that like negative charges. So nucleophiles and electrophiles are relevant to a really important class of reactions called polar reactions. And polar reactions typically involve ions either as reactants, intermediates, or products. And most of the reactions that we're going to study in both Orgo 1 and Orgo 2 will be examples of polar reactions. And polar reactions are basically governed by the fact that negative charges are attracted to positive charges, right? Or species that have lots of electrons are attracted to species that are deficient in electrons. And we've got two examples uh, of compounds that are electrophiles and nucleophiles below. So I've got two similar compounds where I've got a methyl group in this case, on the left, it's attached to a chlorine, and on the right, it's attached to a lithium. Now, we know that chlorine is more electronegative than carbon, right? And so it draws electron density away from the carbon into the chlorine. And this results in the carbon becoming partially positive. On the right-hand side, carbon is more electronegative than lithium, right? And so the carbon pulls electron density away from the lithium, and the carbon becomes partially negative. And in these plots here, uh, where the plots are reddish, that's showing high electron density, and where the plots are bluish, it's showing low electron density. And so we can see, right, in the methyl chloride, right, we have lots of electron density around the chlorine, and the carbon is electron deficient. And in the other case, where I've got the lithium attached to the methyl group, right, the carbon has a lot of electron density, and the lithium is uh, electron deficient. And so we would say that the carbon on the left is electrophilic, right? It's positive, so it likes negative things, right? So it's going to like electrons. Whereas on the right-hand side, right, this carbon that is lacking electron density, I'm sorry, that has a lot of electron density, um, right, because it has a partial negative charge, right, it's nucleophilic, right? It likes nuclei. It's negative, so it likes positive charges. So one of the important things that we're going to need to be able to do is to identify uh, electron-rich and electron-deficient uh, species. And so we want to be able to recognize nucleophiles and electrophiles. So nucleophiles are electron bases, right? Nucleophiles like positive charges, so they typically have extra electrons that they can donate, right? And we know that Lewis bases are electron pair donors. So some examples of nucleophiles are given below. Right, we have the example from before, right, where if carbon is attached to a metal, that's going to give carbon a partial negative charge, and so that's going to be attracted to positive charges, so that will be a nucleophile. Right? If we have full-on negative charges, those are definitely going to be nucleophiles. Right? A negative charge is definitely going to be attracted to positive charges. But we don't have to have charges. Right? We know ethanol, the oxygen, is more polar than the carbons and the hydrogen, so the oxygen will have a high electron density, and so these lone pairs uh, make this ethanol an electrophile. And also when we have pi bonds connecting two carbon atoms, right? we've got lots of extra electrons because of the double bond between these carbons, and so uh, this will make uh, this region of the molecule uh, a nucleophilic center. All right, with electrophiles, we're looking for exactly the opposite. So electrophiles are electron deficient species, right? Because they're lacking electrons, they can accept a pair of electrons, right? And so electrophiles are Lewis acids, which are uh, electron pair acceptors. And so the things we're looking for uh, to have uh, electrophiles are sort of the opposite of nucleophiles, right? The chlorine is partially negative, it's drawing electron density away from the carbon, so this carbon is going to be an electrophile, or if I have full-on positive charges, so those are definitely going to be electrophiles, right? Whereas the full-on negative charges are going to be nucleophiles. All right, and so just sort of a summary of the things we've talked about, the things that can give rise to nucleophiles and electrophiles when we have 
inductive effects, right, where the carbon has extra electron density or any atom really that has extra electron density um, and is partially negative, it will be an electrophile. Or if we have lone pairs, uh, certainly if we have negative charges with the lone pairs, and we have pi bonds are all things we're looking for for nucleophiles. And for electrophiles, we're looking for atoms that have partial positive charges. So if I attach this carbon to a chlorine, carbon becomes partially positive and it will be an electrophile. Or certainly when I have full-on positive charges, in the case of a carbocation, um, then we're going to have an electrophile. All right, so I've got a couple examples where we want to identify first all nucleophilic centers in each of these molecules. All right, so I'm looking for lone pairs, negative charges, um, or uh, the partial charges as a result of inductive effects. So we've seen this before, right? This carbon is going to be more electronegative than this lithium, right? So that's going to draw electron density away from the lithium into the carbon. Uh, and so that carbon is going to be partially negative. And so this is going to be an electro or a nucleophilic center in that molecule, right? I'm also looking for lone pairs, especially on electronegative atoms, right? And so on my OH here, I've got these lone pairs, so this will be a nucleophilic center. Same thing on this electronegative nitrogen. Uh, the nitrogen has three bonds, so it must have one pair, so this nitrogen would be a nucleophilic center. Again, I've got oxygens with lone pairs. That's going to be a nucleophilic center. And again, if I have pi bonds uh, between two carbon atoms, that will also be a nucleophile. All right, for electrophiles, we're looking for partial positive charges um, or full-on carbocations, right? So I look at the one on the right first, right? I see that carbocation, right? That is definitely going to be an electrophile. It definitely wants more electrons. Also, I've got this very electronegative fluorine, and so the carbon that it's attached to is going to be partially positive, and so that will be another electrophile. If I go to the left, right, I've got this carbon here attached to the chlorine, Right, it's going to end up being partially positive. Also, this carbon attached to the oxygen, it's going to be partially positive. Now, we might make the case that the hydrogen also is definitely going to be partially positive. However, um, this is more semantics than anything, but usually a partially positive hydrogen we would call acidic rather than classifying it as an electrophile. So the electrophilic centers, uh, I have two in this molecule, the hydrogen we really classify as being acidic as opposed to being an electrophile. And then I have the two uh, electrophilic centers on the right. All right, just one more example on the next slide. All right, so in this example, again, we want to identify electrophilic centers. For both electrophiles and nucleophiles, we do want to be aware of potential resonance structures because that might uh, create more electrophilic or nucleophilic centers in a different example um, if we have different resonance structures that we can draw. So just looking at this molecule, if I was looking for electrophilic centers, I think I would immediately point to right this carbon. Right, It's double bond to the oxygen, so it's going to be partially positive. So I definitely have an electrophilic center here. But if we consider the other resonance structures I can draw, let me put in my lone pairs. Right, I can draw this resonance structure. And then now I have a carbocation allylic to that double bond. So I can draw this resonance structure. Right, this carbon lost its double bond, nothing replaced it. So that's where the positive charge moved. Right, so based on these resonance structures that I can draw, I think I have two electrophilic centers in this molecule. The first one that we identified in the beginning, and then also this carbon is going to be an electrophilic center, right, based on this particular resonance structure.